So, what's been going on with the Sly Cooper series? And why is it taking so long to bring Sly back? Let's discuss it! How's it going everyone? Blue Knight here, and welcome back to another Sly Cooper video. Yes, it's been a while since I made an actual Sly Cooper video, reason being the lack of any hints or news since the PlayStation Productions announcement. So I recently asked myself a question, which is the basis for today's video, and that is, why is it the Sly series has such a harder time coming back than other PlayStation IPs like Ratchet and Clank? I mean, it's kind of hard to not ask this question since Sly 4 released back in 2013, because we never got Sly 5, yet, the movie got revealed, then shelved in favor of the TV show because of Ratchet and Clank's film box office performance. But no other PlayStation IP has gone through what Sly has, closest being Uncharted, with the film just now making progress after 11 years but still had games releasing in the meantime. Jack and Daxter, I could say, had better treatment, seeing as Naughty Dog didn't want to continue the series after Jack X because they thought they'd be doing a fans a disservice, while the original creators of Ratchet and Clank are still making Ratchet and Clank games long after Naughty Dog and Sucker Punch stopped making their respective series like Sly Cooper and Jack and Daxter. Of course, it's been over three years since we've seen anything for Ratchet and Clank. Back to Sly, though. At first, it would seem like Sony is just kicking the Sly Cooper series around like they don't care about it. Kicking? Oh, I want to do some kicking! <laughs> Why you? What? But upon closer inspection, it would seem that Sony actually does care for the Sly Cooper series and actually all of their IPs which could explain why we haven't got much of anything Sly in so long. Like the sales for Sly 4, for instance, combined with mixed reactions from fans, might have been a factor for another game not getting made at the time. Then the movie trailer released the following year to help build more interest for the series. Unfortunately, Ratchet and Clank's box office performance prevented Sly's film from happening so far. Which, right, that right there probably is where Sony decided to step in. That's right! Stepping in! Big time! And make a partnership with Tenet Color Animation Productions and PGS Entertainment for the TV show, which was a year after Ratchet and Clank's film released. And actually, the film format act does actually fit in with Sly a lot better than the film because that's how the games are laid out. Then we have a plot synopsis release which got some fans worried that the show would be like Sonic Boom. The show then shifted from pre-production back to development, might have been for full restructuring of the show. I'm not too sure on this. Well, I guess after Ratchet and Clank happened, Sony decided to make their own studio for adapting PlayStation IPs to film and TV shows because they're more familiar with their own series than other studios would be. Plus, they could also work with the original creators on these projects. And this got me to thinking about a similar situation to the game side of things and why we don't have Sly 5 yet. Could be because of Sanzaru, the developers of Sly 4. Now, I'm not saying they did a terrible job or anything, because they did make a good Sly game. But like I said before, sales and mixed reactions could have had something to do with it. So, let's take a look at that real quick. The PS3 version of Sly 4 sold about 585 units, according to VG charts, while the PS Vita version sold about 270,000 units. Add that together, and that's about 850,000 units in total for both versions. Now let's compare this number to another end of PS3 gen game from later that same year, Ratchet and Clank Into the Nexus which sold about 690,000 units, and it was only released for the PS3. Also, Into the Nexus released about a week before the PS4 was set to release. So Ratchet and Clank Into the Nexus sold less than Sly 4, but managed to get another game while Sly didn't. 
I understand Ratchet and Clank did because it was for the film, but it could have been because Insomniac Games were the creators of Ratchet and Clank, so therefore they understand it better than anyone else does, which resulted in almost no complaints, less flaws, outside of the game's short length. Whereas Sly 4 had numerous complaints in different areas, and Sony knows Sly is one of their most popular IPs, so they don't particularly want that to fade away. So maybe they're looking for a better studio to handle Sly, going by this tweet by Colin Moriarty, saying, Sly 4's ending teased a Sly 5, but I wouldn't count on seeing it, at least not from Senzaru. Remember, Moriarty has his sources from when he used to work at IGN's PlayStation division, so I'd say he's a reliable source. But again, I must advise everyone to take that with a grain of salt. So in short, Sony cares for all of their IPs, including Sly Cooper, which might be taking so long for Sly to return because Sony wants to make sure it's done right. Again, for the game side of things, something must have happened with Sly 4 that Sony wasn't quite satisfied with. I don't think it'll be a Jack and Daxter The Lost Frontier situation though, where the game was handled by another studio, it sold well on both systems, only to not get a new game afterward. But both games have had mixed reactions from longtime fans. Now, I'm not saying the same thing will happen with Sly Cooper for Sly 5, as Sly 5 seems more likely to come back than Jack and Daxter. Anyways, guys, that's all I've got to really say for the video. So, what do you guys think of all this? Do you think any of this could be why it's taking so long for Sly to return? As usual, be sure to leave your thoughts in the comments section below. And once again, everyone, thanks for watching and supporting the channel. I've been Blue Knight, and I'll see you guys back here next time. Goodbye.